Hi, everybody. This is Wendy Kleinfeld from Wendy K Consulting, and you are tuning in to Life Work Podcast. I know it's been a long minute since my last episode was released. And if you recall, it was a conversation with a divorce coach. I wanted to do something a little bit different this time. I'm going to be having a conversation with a martial arts trainer and coach. It's somebody whom I trained with personally as well. I have a lot of respect for him. He's got an amazing life journey and life story. And we're going to be diving into some of the things that he's learned, um, things like perseverance and resilience over the years of training himself and also training other people and how he's also pivoting things during times of the pandemic and COVID-19. So hope you enjoy this and stay home. All right. Hey, Jimmy, how's it going? Good to see you. Good. How are you doing? Good. I'm really glad to be able to um, get you on the podcast. Finally. I know um, when I first started this, you were also going through some transition in the middle, like well, it was in the beginning of a pandemic. And I was going through a transition in the pandemic. I was, you know, just laid off and I was thinking of doing something new. And I thought, hey, I want to start a podcast where I'm talking to really interesting people about topics I'm really interested in. And and you were one of the first people actually that came to my mind because, you know, I love martial arts, always have throughout my life. And um, going to your gym, training with you back when, you know, I lived in Bend. Uh, was, you know, probably like the highlight of my time there. So, and I thought, you know what, the Mm -hmm. way you practice martial arts um, to me felt like you took some of the principles and lessons to how you live life. And I wanted to talk to you to see how, you know, how you've been doing that, how, you know, what lessons or what principles you've been taking away and how you've been applying them. Because I think even though not everyone practices martial arts, um, there's things that they can learn from the practice. So yeah, really glad to have you on. And um, yeah, tell us a little bit who you are. I, you know, you're Jimmy, Jimmy Smith. Right. Um, yeah, say a little bit who you are. What do you do today? Gotcha. So Jimmy Smith, you know, I was um, in a lot of, I was brought up in foster homes. And that was one of the reasons that got me into martial arts. Um but one of the things also is like what I'm doing today is I'm still training and coaching. I had to pivot my business from big brick and mortar to more online and hybrid training and in person. I love the martial arts. It's taught me so much in regards to perseverance, adapting, change, uh, compassion. Um, you just got to dig in deep with yourself and just get better through the challenges. And I've been doing this for over 37 years now. So I'm like, wow, a few years underneath my belt. And it's more about life skills and attributes as opposed to just, oh, you're going to get your black belt. No, it's about you becoming a better version of you during the process of the training. And to me, it's like, yeah, you're going to work out hard and it's super fun and challenging, but you know what? You're going to go at your own level and at your own pace. Everybody's different. And when you were training with me, you saw the wide diversity. I had a woman's only kickboxing, and then I had co-ed kickboxing. And you rocked it, by the way, every time in there. And you still do better splits than I can, so I can't even get that. So <laughs> I don't know about lately, though, you know, with, um, uh, with the baby and all that. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, but I, I love what you talked about, um, perseverance and resilience, because I feel like those are the two attributes or two skills or characteristics that a lot of us were really leaning on. Those were the muscles. I think a lot of us were flexing this past year, right? A lot of us had to persevere. A lot of us had to be resilient and not everyone. um, And the reason why I say their muscles is that, you know, that you practice them over time and not everyone has like those big muscles to begin with. And so, you know, things have been harder for some folks and it's not that there's anything that's their fault, but that those are, those are muscles you have to kind of keep practicing at. Right. Um, You talked about being foster home and how that that was the reason you got started. So say a little bit more, you've been doing this for like you said, 37 years. So yeah. Yeah. Tell me, tell us a little more how you like, why you got into it. Why martial arts? Why not like other sports? So I did, I did other sports and I was really good. I was gifted with, you know, football, not so much baseball, 
but I was a good runner, but I did got into martial arts because I was in and out of foster homes my whole life. So through that, I was getting bullied. I was a skinny kid. I was, I had lacked self-confidence mm -hmm. through that. I see my mom beating in front of me that I couldn't do anything about it at a young age. And so when I tried to help her out, I couldn't because I was just a young kid. And through that, I got jumped, um, beaten numerous times, stolen from. I started practicing going to the local karate gyms outside in Long Beach. And I would be going outside, practicing outside the window until the, the instructor or the sensei or the seafood would come out. And then I would take off running because I didn't want to get beat up by him out on the streets. But I kept on going there. And then I would practice across the street to kind of learn and, pe and people were laughing at me but I was like I was determined to to learn something because I was tired of getting beat up and my drive was more for my I wanted to help my mom and I wanted to help people out too and build up those skills because I was never a big guy I was skinny so I went to the gym and started lifting and that was like my balance and got in shape and learned a lot of great um, lessons through that but then I came across a foster parent that got me into judo and as mm -hmm. he first started me in judo I was like oh my gosh I can actually practice on the mat and the gi and grabbing and throwing and all of that and then I went into taekwondo uh, uh, kali uh, um, jiu-jitsu or now grappling it wasn't jiu-jitsu back then it was more like wrestling and just mm -hmm. did a wide gambit of martial arts from boxing kickboxing and started seeing like wow these are great these are really good skill sets but i can't i was in and out of foster homes my whole life so it was hard for me to stay through a system to get a, a black belt or to stay yeah. in and believe because it was everything when it was time to practice it things changed when it was in a street fight and i've been in a gazillion street fights, street fights and got my butt handed to me many times. But it was through that, like I would get into my stance and I was like, man, this was always working in the, in the class with the guy going at me with 20% aggression, as opposed to a hundred percent aggression that just kind of flipped everything around. So that's where I got like, okay, how is this going to be more into attributes? I love mm -hmm. the boxing because there was no belts on there. You're like, okay, it was so simple. It was only four punches a jab cross hook and I was like an opera kind I was like are you kidding me this and then you could go in here and and then it was all the skill set the flavors the skills that you learn through the process to adapt and become a better boxer and so through that I was like oh man well I can add some kicks without having a systematic approach of it's got to be done this way mm -hmm. that way just yeah. like how Bruce Lee started it and then how the Gracies changed the world like that. It was the next evolution. They evolved. And so now it was like, well, how do you evolve all together? And then MMA came in and through MMA, it was like, wow, it just kind of skyrocketed through that, through martial arts. I was very fortunate and blessed to train with some of the top people. Um, Art Camacho, who's a good friend and mentor and my number one like personal Sifu, so to speak, that I still stay in contact with today is just had a huge impact on my Camacho life. is a great martial artist that came up from the barrio and L.A. was an overweight kid and just made his world change. And I really cling to him as a martial artist. He was phenomenal. He's had multiple black belts. But through that, he was able to work in Hollywood and become a fight car. I started out as a stunt double, a fight for fight choreographer now he's a director in mm. the hollywood film which is really cool so to see his passion and to be influenced through that when he was kind of starting out at the beginning of his career and he just skyrocketed and today it's like manny it's amazing every time i try to go down to la if he's not working i was like i gotta see you he's like come to the set i'm like all right i just want to see you and hang out with you yeah. because it's so much he was one of the biggest role models because i didn't have a father growing up so I looked at him as one of my father figures and a lot of other martial artists, coaches that came into my life through my high school wrestling coach, uh, Antonio McKee, uh, Mike Cadline, a lot, a lot of other like martial artists that had a really specific skill set. Yeah. The best thing through art is he taught me so many life lessons that was really hard, but it's also, I, 
he was the one that I got my foot into being a stunt double, being a helping him with some of the fight scenes and being on the movie set to be with some of the top martial artists back in the day, you know, from Gerald Yocomoto, Richard Rabago, um, a lot of great people that taught that I learned a lot of skill set from. And I was able to do a few, actually about 10 to 15 films as a fighter, as a stunt double, as an extra. And it was just about being around great martial artists too. That sounds super fun. <laughs> oh, it was, it was. Yeah, that's awesome. So, you know, I love um, the way you shared your story, how you talked about you first got into it because, you know, you wanted it was self-defense. You know, you felt like you had to protect yourself. You wanted to protect your mom. And, and eventually you got to a point where it, it sounds like you found like a higher meaning or this bigger purpose to martial arts more than just yeah. self-defense. Um, and then you also shared around, you know, the perseverance and the resilience aspects. What do you think are the biggest life lessons for you today around martial arts that you not only you practice, but you also teach. So there's going to be, um, and this came to me, I forgot who told this to me, but every storm eventually runs out of rain. So meaning like life is, is tough. Life is challenging and it's not going to get easy. You just got to get better at you. So if you start and posing like work focusing in on yourself instead of outsourced resources believing other people because i was doing that i wanted them to believe in me so i could believe in me mm -hmm. as opposed to the other way around i need to believe in me so other people could i start with me and then it can come on the outside so through that like adapting changing like i I've, I've done it i've i'm living it i've persevered my whole life has been tough like I had to adapt. I had to, I was in from one foster home. I get accustomed to one family and I'm like, all right, here it is. And all of a sudden, boom, I moved. So that kind of resilience of like, all right, my ups and down, my emotion, my emotional roller coaster. And, and it's part of life. Like, you know, I'm married. I have three kids and I'm trying to teach my kids. And it's like, you guys have no idea what it's like not to have to worry about getting jumped, getting stabbed, yeah. getting beaten. Um, you have a life, you have food on the table, you, you don't have to worry about somebody taking things away, and they have another skill set, too. So through through the martial arts in life, it's it's taught me how to adapt, overcome challenges. This COVID-19, who would have ever thought this was in here? Yeah. I had a flourishing gym. I started from my garage when I started training people, and then I moved to a 500 square foot, 1,000 square foot, 1,500, 2,000. And 3000 was my last location. I was getting ready to expand, but then COVID hit and it was like, no, the lives that I've changed when people come through my past is so personal to me because, man, you're trusting me and it's, it's hard work and I'm not going to let people like, yeah. oh, just quit on themselves because I've quit on myself and I know how I have to get out. When you're in a rut, you need to be around people that are going to be getting you and uplifting you at that time. And through this, it wasn't my own, wasn't my doing, but yet when clients are changing in and then I had rent and gyms just going crazy, like people were closing and the pandemic and everybody's hit. And I respect that when people lost their jobs, I could not keep on charging them out of the heart. You know what I mean? Yeah. And this is part of like the charts. Like my word is my word. Like, I ripped up everybody's contract and I was like, you know what? We're starting over. I mean, and then I was like, oh shit, I still got to pay rent. I still yeah. got to pay my bills. Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay. Well, I was very, I was always doing personal training from fitness. You cannot be a great martial artist and not be in good shape and vice versa. You know, a good fitness person or martial artist has to have that. So it's literally like the hand in glove and all my instructors were always fit. Not one of them till this day is out of shape. And mm -hmm. I still keep that in there. And it's from weights to calisthenics to uh, shadow boxing to drills to lifting to functional training. And that's what I've gotten into more of that. So through that, this was a whole arsenal of all these 
coaches that have had, that came to me or that I went to them and I was able to learn from them. But the only difference now, I just add my flavor based on each individual because you're going to be different from training from this person. And I could never be like, okay, here, you're going to learn, you're going to get your black belt. And here's all these steps that you have to do, which is great. Mm -hmm. But to me, that was never my ordeal because it was all about you move different. Let's move this one here. And I'm able to adapt on the spot and being from that experience to pull from art like he's got to move this way this guy's going here this person's here so you got to make these certain moves that make them look better that work with them and there's a a good skill set that doesn't happen overnight same thing with exercises when people have a bad back bad neck well don't do this let's work around that focus on what you can do as opposed to what you can't do yeah and that's what martial arts is all about like yeah different stages and ages we're going to have a different skill set yeah, I think that's also why I really enjoyed training with you is because of the fact that um, maybe that's just like the rebel part of me, but I didn't, I didn't like the structure gyms, you know, I didn't like the structure of, you got to know these things, and then we'll grant you the next level. Um, right. ra you know, and I, I enjoyed much more your approach of, well, let's see what you could actually do and how you apply those, right? Because right. you could have the basics down, but just knowing the moves doesn't mean that you, um, I guess it's like the sum is greater, um, the whole is greater than some of the parts, right? Like you could have all the moves individually and just knowing them is not enough. You got to know how to put them together. And, the, and I remember one of the, to this day, I still remember one of the hardest things you made us do was, it was only like barely a minute or a three minute round where you put on like all these pads oh. and you'll come at us. And then you said the goal is for us to just stay, stay standing. Right. Or if we fall, we have to get up. And I just remember like, those were the hardest three minutes of my oh. life. And, and that's where like the, those, those skills that you, you teach us, it's like, Oh my gosh, like when it matters, I right. don't remember them or they're just so hard because I'm struggling with, like you said, the fitness part and also the skill sets part. So I, I really like how you're talking about, you know, like it's really more about, um, yeah, you might know X, Y, Z, but you know actually how to use them. Right. And when you're in an encounter and that's the number one thing is I want your adrenaline is going to go from zero to a hundred miles an hour. It's going to go back and forth. So you have to know yourself. You have to learn the challenge is always within yourself you have to learn how to adapt and how do you get better by pushing you through the limits safely but not hurting you but also mm -hmm. calling you out to make it like this is going to be the grind now you transfer that into your work man i got this board meeting this guy's whatever this quote or he's not going in here so now you're like you know what if I can go in here at this level of three minutes, I can, I can deal with this guy because I don't have to worry about getting punched or moving and all this. It's just a mental, but look at the mental strength that you got through that. It was hard on everybody, not one person. And it was like, I call it the gauntlet. So one person's in the middle and everybody yeah. comes at you at different stages. And you're like, oh my gosh, well, welcome to organized chaos. Welcome yeah. to life. Once you get... Like what this is a new chaos that we're in right now. Now we're like, oh, how do I got to adapt and move? Like through all of this stuff, I've never stopped serving people from my heart. Like I've, I know in my heart and it's a lot more personal, especially when I'm training women in self-defense. Like because I'm yeah. my mom, I can really help. And I've helped thousands of people through that the, the self-defense, through martial arts, through kickboxing, through fitness. And it's so cool to be a part of their story. So I, I tell people I'm, I'm a bridge and I'm also a shortcut. So I'm a bridge from point A to point B. Here's the shortcut is me in between. So it's how you use me forever, however long, every forever, however long a season or your reason. But I know when you come through my bridge, it's going to be the best darn thing that I can do to help serve you at your skill, as opposed to somebody else like, oh, okay, you got to do this. And I don't know, it's my way or it's the highway. No, I'm constantly adapting with my clients with, you know, I'm still training kids. I'm still training women. I'm still training men. Um, and that's really fun because they bring my skill 
to serve them. Like he moves different here. I got to go here. And then when I had classes of 40 to 50 people into a class and we kept that pace at all skill levels going, it was challenging. But now I'm pinpointing on you. Oh, all my attention and focus is on you. So how can you not get better? If you, yeah. don't, if you don't do the work, you know what I mean? And you've always done the work and that's what was like, it was a good community. You've seen people come in and go and like, oh yeah, they give up for first month. They're like, oh, that's really hard. Well, welcome. Yes. We're not going to lally that. We're here to work out. Let's work out. You can talk afterwards. It's not, it's not tea time. It's workout time. Yeah. I love that. I also really enjoy your analogy of, you know, being a bridge. So you know, along the lines of like you being the bridge, you're adapting to people and you're adapted to business, your business, right? With the COVID-19 and the pandemic. Um, share a little bit, what do you do today? Because you don't have a physical gym anymore, but you're still active in training. Yes. So how are you doing this today? So I am doing what I call is like a hybrid. I do in-person, very limited in-person because I'm. it's only me. I don't have to hire coaches. So what I do is I do in-person training out of my house or online through zoom, or I also have my trip, my own custom app that I train clients remotely all over the world now, which is really cool because I've never thought I would ever do that and understand that. And I had to learn and I went and got certified for, to become an online certified trainer, which was really cool because I hate going back to school, but yet oh. I did it and I passed and I had to go with the changes. So I served people from, if they're looking, if they have stressful jobs, if they're looking to get in shape, lose weight, build confidence, if they have a home gym or if they have a gym or if they want to learn kickboxing, self-defense, well, this is one program that's all dialed in. When I had the gym, I had to separate it. Mm -hmm. Now you get all of me with everything that I have. I got a nutritionist that helps with all the meal plans. So I got somebody way better than me that can help serve my clients to reach their goals and everybody's so different. Um, and so that's how I'm, I'm training people now, which is a good learning curve because I still want to stay in the game, but I also don't want to like, Oh, I can't help anybody anymore. I just had to adapt. And this is yeah. living proof. I mean, through this pandemic, who would have ever thought we bought our first house and I was like, it was challenging. I'm still moving, packing, yeah. building, everything and then the stressors but i'm still training clients and through that it's like dude we are all, we we are all faced with challenges and we're going to be faced with them for the rest of our life it's just how do you get better you get better by being around better people books podcasts learning continuing my education listening to music whatever it is that's going to help you be the better version of you you cannot go wrong it's like a, a client said, if you're willing to gamble, you better gamble on yourself. And I'm gambling on myself 100%. Yeah, I love that. Um, so if you said something interesting, like, you know, because you used to have that in-person training, and I found that really valuable. And then you also said that um, now you get to work with people like internationally, too, which yeah. you couldn't have done before, right, with brick and mortar gym. So if people want to get in touch with you, if you if they're curious about how they can learn martial arts remotely or just get in better shape or whatever their goals are and they are curious about you, how, how can they reach out? So there's a, they can go to my website. It's a smithma.com, S-M-I-T-H-M-A dot C-O-M. Reach through, see the videos. There's a contact us page right there and you can see when I had the gym. And then from there, I can kind of reach out more remotely. And then there's an application if they want to train with me. There's a pre-screening uh, pre that it helps me, helps them. And you can go to this. They want to just go straight into the application. It's um, tiny, T-I-N-Y dot C-C slash Smith, S-M-I-T-H hyphen application, A-P-P-L-I-C-A-T-I-O-N. And they can just go there, fill that out directly and... I will reach out to them and see if we're a good fit. Awesome. If not, I will direct them to other people too, because I'm not, I can't serve everybody, but yet yeah. I know where my expertise is. Yeah. So I, I love that humility in your practice too. So that's awesome that you, you know, kind of just call that out too. Um, yeah. It, and like you said, you know, I think it's amazing how you've turned your business around in like such a short time, you know, like you built your, 
practice over the years and I've seen your gym grow over the years too, when I first started and then to where it was last. Um, So the fact that you turn around, you put it online and now you're serving people in a very different way and still keeping true to kind of what you believe in. And you also bought a home. So that's a really big, really big transition. So uh, in many ways, I would say congratulations. And, um, and also for people watching or listening, uh, the red was unplanned. (laughs) We did not, you know, share notes on what to wear. Um, But I think it's also auspicious because today is the Lunar New Year. And I wanted to wear red because that's just our color, especially in the Chinese culture and many other, you know, um, East Asian cultures too. And the fact that you're wearing red, I think is just an auspicious sign that we were meant to come together and have this conversation. Oh, so. That's right. <laughs> and you know what, this is the thing, um, through a, um, one of my logos, I wanted to share this too, is because I had a client that actually uh, built this. I had a, traditionally the yin and yang symbols of life and which is great. But now this is what she ended up building uh, for me, and this was on my logos. So these were hands of destruction at one point. Now these are hands of construction to build people up mm. um, through this. So we all need each other to lift each other up. And Wendy, I appreciate you more than you can imagine. And it was cool training with you and your husband yeah. when you guys came down. It was awesome. Yeah, and that was so fun for your, to see the little baby too. That's really yeah, really cool. yeah, for sure. Well, thank you so much, Jimmy. Um, folks, you know, uh, the information to get in touch with Jimmy is below in the screen. If you have questions for me or if you want to check out what I'm about, my information is below as well. And as always, thank you for tuning in. And uh, this was Life Word Podcast. And uh, thank you, Jimmy. And I'll awesome. see you all later.